a very sprightly rendition there, Nathan. I, <laughs> just really fun. And, you, you know, I mean, speaking of, like, being true to the period, I, I almost felt like this was truer to Mendelssohn's period, you know, um, just like a little bit after, let's say, like the the generation after Beethoven. Um it felt more like that than Beethoven himself, though. Like, there's certainly, you know, there's some things that are in character. Uh, you know, there's a there's a little bit of of Schubert in there as well. Okay, so <clears throat> before I jump into it, I just want to say that like you really should check your harmony a little bit, all right? Because I I feel that there are some errors that sort of crept into your interpretation. Um, uh, let's see, um, yeah, so, so for instance, like there was a, a B natural here in the cellos, right? Um, which turned this into a G minor chord that was sort of fighting with the G major chord, right? Setting up the upcoming C cadence, right? Cadence to C. Then here, like, um, you know, this would appear to be a nice expansion of this chord, but the way that it's scored, there just isn't enough emphasis on the root of A flat, right? In fact, you have so much in, um, emphasis on the median of C, that it just really throws the chord off of balance, right? So like really what we needed here was more weight on the A flat, right? So if you'd had the um, the cellos here maybe playing fifths, right? Which they get very, very easy for them to do, um, you know, um, a non divisi fifth here, All right? For instance, that would be a way of bulking it up. But I just like, you know, putting this much weight here on the median and then like, yeah, and it just, this F sharp isn't like in the best place either, right? Um, it's, it would be better spread out in other places. Like here you've got it in the violas and in the oboes and so on. It just needs to be a little bit higher. I mean, that's those are that's more like harmony than it is orchestration. But you can see how orchestration really affects harmony in terms of like the voicings. Um, then, so I'm trying to remember all these little parts. Um, I'm about... Uh, I'm about 80%, maybe 85%. Um, but yeah, like the, just, you know, this bar has some problems just in terms of not really necessarily um, transcribing this material all too well um, across there. And there's this one other spot that just sort of, you know, it had like a, it had a wrong note in it. Oh yeah, it's, it's right here. Like, um, what you really needed to do was end uh, emphatically with a, you know, just a really beautiful F major chord here. But you have these E's sitting in here, these sounding E's. Um, and that just like, you know, it just like, it, maybe that was a mistake. Maybe it was just a kind of a result of the way that you were, you know, you had the, the second oboe's motion around it and so on. So, yeah, I mean, it's... It's just it's just not the most opportune thing, right? So so they're just like I think some of this is proofreading and some of it is like maybe you're reinterpreting the harmony, but it, I mean I, d I didn't feel that the reinterpretation worked all that smoothly with you know the way you're trying you're kind of going for this sort of perfection of form and this you know this really beautiful kind of look back to the 19th century and so on. So anyways, just you know watch out if you're going to change things that much and it doesn't really flow. You know, if it doesn't ring true, then just really, you know, just always question it, always think about it. Then, like, think about things like this, where you just throw, like, a, a slur across repeated notes, right? Like here, we've got this slur across these Cs, right? Have we talked about this before, I think, in in a previous, um, in previous efforts? And then, yeah, I mean, here you're sort of taking pains to have, like... Uh, um, you know, this is more right here. The slurs um, follow a bowing pattern that is a bit more sensible. Hang on, my somebody put my timer 
somewhere else. As my son has been borrowing it. He's been using the timer for his his piano practice, which I really recommend, but it <laughs> takes it away from where I can see it. I just have to make sure that I don't go on for hours and hours and hours about particular little little bits and pieces. I'm trying to be better about that, uh, uh, little aspects. So yeah, so so here, that's a much more sensible bowing pattern than just like, than say, if you were to just drop the original uh, slur. It's kind of strange. The slur is missing from the source, but it's here in the winds. Okay, but um, in this case here, like you have the, I mean, just think about the bowing here. You're going down, up, down, up, down into the crescendo, and then up out of it, all right? So it, it just, what if you were to go like this, um, up, like with a slur here, and then down, up, down, up all by itself and then slur down up that way you get the at the end of the crescendo you get more of the force of the up bow and then just make this all down right just one slur so i'm not saying to put those markings in but i'm just saying just calculating like the way that you would calculate and say okay well this is an up bow that's a down bow that's an up bow right so i'm not saying to put the markings in but just to think about you know calculating how the bow is going to work across the strings now here like you know, I mean, this is just dropping this this slur uh, from the source piano onto the second violin part, right? Shouldn't it have been down, uh, up, right? Down, slur, and then up, right? And then same thing, like you just, here you could like just make this into two um, separate notes. Although, like, don't we need the A? Like, what happened to this A here? Right? Shouldn't it be slur up to A on a on a eighth note and then play another A? Right. And here, this could be da 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 da, uh, like da 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 da. You could slur this and then go up bow there, or you could make this the slur. Right. So down up. Okay. All right. Well, hmm. Okay. So, all right. So, you know, those are just some impressions about about Boeing, and I think you could simplify things going forth here. Um, you know, da da, and this is really love. Da, lovely da da. Um, and that, but like, do you really not? want to have any accent here like like any down bow or, or up bow on the accent da, da, down up right wouldn't that work better than da, because like when if you slur across an accent that means that the player has just has to dig in with the bow going the same direction and it's less um it's less precise or no i mean it's precise but i mean it's less concise it's less um the attack is has less power right and same thing here, like there's no tongue, it's all gut, right? Ta is that, is it really? You don't want ta da ta da. Right? So just really think about this. Like what you know, how think about pitch you know, pitch formation and articulation and everything else. Yeah. So sorry, I mean it's like I'm I know I'm spending a lot of time on this, but um Da, 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 da. I mean, do you really want da da as opposed to da da da? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's yeah. Some of these things are easier to do, like you know if the if the path of the music of the arc of the music really you know crosses into different registers sometimes it's easier to take on little you know shorter bits with the bow because of the bow traveling across the strings i mean it's not a not an enormous issue i mean especially if you look at paganini but okay all right so i all right see i i am not going to get too caught up in that all right so uh let us look at the whole issue of the um, 
evaluation criteria and not get too stuck on all of these this little picky stuff. I'll just add the picky stuff in as I go. Alrighty, so um, does the intro set the mood effectively? I mean, I mean it does. I, I just want you to think about one little thing here, and that is like, um, you know, the the orchestration that follows is different in enough in approach to where it is a new start, right? But it's not different enough in terms of colors, right? Except for like, you know, leaving the horns out here. So I, I want you to really think about, about like, you know, setting up a beautiful intro and then using exactly the same instruments going forwards, right? You know, you just end up with the same voices as before. There are, um, there's a, just, you know, a little bit of dubiousness, carelessness, I would say, in terms of marking some dynamic entrances. I mean, I know you tried your best and that's, that's great. But like it's things like this, you know, starting after a fermata and a double bar, you might want to mark your dynamics again, even if they're the same exact thing, right? And here too, right? Uh, just certainly, you know, something that that you would get a raised hand at rehearsal, or the the conductor would just ask you, "Look, is this is all is this all piano um, after the fermata?" And you you know, and then you'd have to say yes, and then you would think to yourself, "Well, why didn't I just put it in, right?" Okay, so the question is, does the intro set the mood effectively? Uh, I feel that it does. Um, you're running a little bit of a risk here uh, with the, the flute, um, possibly being absorbed by the sound of the first violin. Uh, so one way around that is to mark this solo. And the other thing is leaving the first note out of the um like the first melody the lowest or the 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 opening middle c melody note out of the melody and just giving it to the second violinists right so it just it is it's so much less clear right and then there then here in the winds there is no c at all so suddenly there's this f up here so we just really lose the effect of like where is the melody, and, the, and then and then by you know leaving out the second A in both the first flute and the first violin part, we just we are losing touch with where the melody is and where how it is setting up the next bar, right? Okay. Um, yeah, but I mean you know no no big problems here. Horns in F. I mean, you you are making an attempt here to to make the to make your horns play by the rules, right? And and you know, for the most part, everything is pretty much in the you know in the scope of what is possible. I mean, you know, I mean, you've got a, an F natural here and there, but it's but you know, at least on this first page, it's very nicely done. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, if if there were any critique that I would possibly add here is just to think about the effect of how you're stacking this all together. Like you've got your you've got your strings coming in on this lower register, and then you have the wind sort of sitting on top of them, right? And I mean that's not an unpleasant sound, but it just means that the that the strings have got like no you know, you don't you don't get as orchestral a sound when you are when you have your first violin so low, right? And then also there, with the way that this is all set up, there is a risk that the oboes and first clarinet will sort of stand out a bit um, more than the melody itself because the first violins are in a weaker register and the the flute is has is running the risk of being absorbed by first violin. Of course, as I said, you know, if you just say one solo. You don't need to mark it up to mezzo piano or, or mezzo forte or anything. The player will just know to play out. But yeah, but here you should definitely go C, F, G, G, A, A, B flat, right? 
and and also here in the first violin there's no there's no problem with both the seconds and the first playing that same C to start off with so that like if you're looking like going from two voices to three voices here then you just basically have first and second voice sharing the upper um, the upper pitch of this A third and then the A on the bottom is the third voice right so it just makes for a much smoother, much easier to hear melody. Because the melody doesn't start. Da, 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 da. The melody is C, F, G, G, A. So if we don't have, if we don't have our main melody, no, melody instruments playing that C nice and, you know, nice and effectively, then, then we just don't have the, you know, don't have the, the, a real carry through. And then like, you know, speaking of which, I think uh, you may have watched some of these other evaluations up to now, and, and you're probably thinking, if you have, you're probably thinking, I oh, know Thomas is going to totally nail me on stopping, you know, following this particular idea here of like how Beethoven like did not make this F last to the end of the bar. Okay. Now, just because Beethoven didn't make this F last to the end of the bar doesn't mean that you should just absent all support from the end of the bar, right? Because if you listen to how this is played, it's one. It, um, it, it you know if you uh, to our terrific uh, piano soloist. I'm God. I'm so glad that I was able to include him, Spencer Meyer. He leaves his thumb sitting on this F. Right, and you can you can definitely hear it continuing to play all the way through to this C. So you know, and also I believe he also holds down this A. So he's going da da and then ba da da, and he ends up with like, like an F, A, and a C at the end. So all those pitches should carry through in all of these parts, so that you have this nice, beautiful kind of nocturnal sound, just kind of hanging there on this fermata. So so my first so you know. Um, Make a copy <laughs> of the um, of your file, and then just you know, and just add this suggestion. Just make all of these notes tie forward into the fermata, right? And then listen to the mock-up and see what you think. See if I'm right. Okay, so now um, let's take a look at the next thing. So melody starting with elegance. I mean, I feel that this is just a nice economical way of of interpreting this and adding the support of the of the clarinets and just not going too too much overboard on the doubling like if anything like the oboes have like this nice other <clears throat> kind of function rather than just being melodic doublers right so I, I just feel that, that that works great so so I think I mean yeah it's 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 more sprightly than elegant but it's still you know does it have the right kind of emotional shape it does, and and I also like the way that you've set this up with um, a measured tremolo on your viola part and cello parts, so that the um, you know so that just it's once again it it I mean I have a question mark natural flow I mean there's a natural rhythm there's a natural energy here it doesn't really a flowing energy it's more of like a up 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 you know it's that kind of like that um, that kind of paste energy that uh, Mendelssohn was so good at, yeah. And then this is all really nice. So I mean, I would say that like you do, you know, as far as the criteria go, you know, natural transition to octaves is all nicely done. Expanding without clogging up, uh, I mean, sort of. It, it gets a little cloggy in here, and then like when this follows through, um, so that like you've got the um you end up with like you know sort of a minor here in the middle and that's that feels cloggy to me so like yeah I, I just i feel that the maybe it goes a little far you know it could just be a little too you know like following through on everything here you know maybe it was good enough just to have the, the clarinets in here right and and you know, I mean, I, I I love the idea of the contrary motion here, but I I'm not in love with this E at all, right? I feel it it changes the the um, the intentions of the composer a little too much for the period that you're trying to emote, right? Okay, 
All right, so now we get to this next section, contrast with theme, question mark, contrast between lines, harmonic support needed. Okay, so like, um, you you know, you answer all of those questions. I mean, I, I really love this whole idea of like going between the two groups of violins. So like, so in, in a, in a, like a, a period setting, the, the first will be on the left and the seconds will be on the right. So this definitely will have like a stereophonic effect, right? You know, the, so, the, you know, you'll have, you'll have this sounding on the right and then the sounding on the left. And then you'll have like right in the center here, this, you know, da, 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 which I think is just so cool. I mean, it's a, it's a great way of reinterpreting the, you know, bum, 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 this yeah, da, da, da. So cool. And, you know, and very Beethoven like, I would say. And then just like the little pushes here with the um, with the horns and and bassoons, uh, yeah, I just I just feel that that's excellent. Now, um, emphatic color of line, setting up harmonic density, you do both of those things really really well here. Um, I don't see why the firsts can't be doubling the flutes though, or or vice versa. Why they you know the. I would think of it more of the flutes doubling the, the first if the first were an octave higher. I don't think that this needs to be doubled on the pitch. I think it's, I mean, I see what you're trying to do. You're, you're, you put, you did it this way so that you could get this harmony inside, the, inside of the, you know, inside of the, the texture. But there's no reason why you couldn't just go to Divisi here and just have this FGA happening in your seconds. And then just take this and put an octave higher, doubling the the first flute. And then I think that this would really sing. It would just it would be so nice. Um, I I mean yeah, and see here you have this little compromise built in right in here because, uh, you know, because your oboes can only go so low. I mean they could, they could conceivably go down to that B, and it would you know could easily be a little too squawky, right? So it's something I would probably avoid myself, like, you know, scoring to the period. So, but I really do like the way that the, you know, the harmonic density sets things up, but you really have to watch out right in here. See, like dynamically, you've kept things pretty backed off, you know, pretty much in that piano, that beautiful, colorful little piano kind of area. Um, I think you need a destination dynamic at the end of these hairpins. You need to remember to put hairpins in all the parts, right? So that so that when we have this piano, we can go back to piano but subito, right? So yeah, da 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 mezzo forte, right? Da 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 piano subito, dun dun dun. So you've set up. So the the harmonic density sets up the. The, the denser scoring, but you know, but the drop to piano is a really nice touch, just the way that you have it scored. But you know, don't don't have three pitches in a row like this with a slur over them. Okay, like unless it's say mezzo staccato or portato. Okay, like and unless you have like staccato marks or tenuto marks on them, so that so that we can just see that it's all under one bow. You know, uh uh uh. Right. I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, you can be too picky about stuff like this, but generally speaking, you know, people will treat it like a portato, right? Um, if, if they see this without the markings, but you should mark them because you should be, you should be intelligently thinking about your scores and about giving clear directions to the player that they can immediately process. All right. But I don't really see any reason for you to be going down, up, down with your, strings and to be going yeah with your winds make them all do the same thing and especially if you're going down to a soft dynamic i think that the so that individually articulated pitches in all the uh in all of the sections makes a lot more sense than slurs you know da 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 ah, bum, bum, bum. you know what i mean it's just everybody pacing together i think it just makes a lot more sense and it you know it just it's just it's just clean it's it just feel excuse me it, it feels a little sloppy when you 
unclean. Uh, this sounds that sounds sort of biblical. <laughs> this is unclean scoring, Nathan. No, it's no, it's fine. It, but it just it's way better to have slurs in all parts or or individually articulated notes in all parts. Okay. All right. And and uh, you know I totally approve of the textures and contrasts and everything else going on in here. This I think that that's all great and. Um, yeah, so this could be done easily, non divisi in, yeah, all of these parts could easily be done non divisi if you wanted. But, I mean, you just leave them alone and, and uh, they'll be fine. Okay, so, now going on to <clears throat> fresh new color at B I have in my criteria. Okay, so, um, what's interesting here is that you... Uh, like this here is all the more stronger of an argument for you to dr to to jump the first violins up an octave, right? Like maybe you could go, you know, da 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 do you see what I'm saying? So like if this were up an octave and then this jumps back down and then this up an octave and this jumps back down, right? Um, and then this makes more sense rather than just being like, oh, okay, it's more unison via violins, right? Because, I mean, you don't want to get too much into this. Like you're, you're ex except for right in here, your violin scoring has really been like very much in you know in the lower register of the violin you know and and we're just continuing on here right and and your winds are providing the upper color for you know almost all the time so so there's there's a danger i think of just sounding too much the same ish right um and you know you go back and you look at the you look at a score um from back in that period, and you'll find that they are constantly shifting the texture, <laughs> right? Uh, and, and, you know, I mean, much to the contrary of the advice of uh, orchestration teachers of, for the past hundred years, you know, they'll, they'll constantly like have one section playing, then the other section playing, and go back and forth and back and forth and another thing. And, it's, and, you know, like things that they tell you not to do, they do it all the time, but it works because it's that style. Uh, wouldn't be so great with the more modern style. Or maybe it would be. So, um, yeah, so, so, all right. So let's say that you did jump this an octave and everything else, and that makes this better. Okay, makes it better, and I really love the push here, but don't you need to give us a destination dynamic? Especially to this, you know, um, what does Beethoven say? Sforzando, right? So, I mean, it would be kind of nice to say, like, well, at least, you know, are we going to mezzo forte or what, what are we doing? Um, and I don't think there's any need for you to, to mark up your flutes to, to mezzo forte. Just have them be piano. I mean, it, it'll, it will definitely, like, and just mark it, you know, one solo, right? And then just have the same dynamic level. It'll stand out, okay? Maybe not in your mock-up, but it will in real life. Okay, so uh, and so here I like the complementary texture, you know, shared in clarinets and violas. That's cool. And here is your um, your fresh new color right on top, right? So because yeah, because because we haven't really heard uh, solo flute as a its own individual color, you know, unaccompanied color, um, exposed color, I should say. Uh, like if you follow my advice and jump this up an octave, then this is doubled, that is doubled, or swallowed, <laughs> and then once again we hear that flute standing out. Right now, if you wanted to be really individual with it, you know, you could have had like say maybe high clarinet or something like that. But that's all right. This this works fine. Okay, now uh, there's a problem here, and that is you're not giving the second flute player the downbeat, right? Give them the downbeat. If you give them the downbeat here, give them the downbeat there, right? It's better for them to go ta ta ka ta ta ka ta ta ka ta ta ka ta right? Rather than um, 
ta da ta ta da ta ta da ta right? So like they have to think about the and and then coming in or thinking about, excuse me, thinking about the one and then coming in exactly on the and with the player. It's just better if they're going da 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 rather than rest da 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 da. Do you see what I mean? Just give them the first, give them the first pitch in this pattern so that they just lock into the pattern. It doesn't matter if it's an octave higher at the beginning. It doesn't matter. It's all fine. Okay, so this is all cool. I will say one thing that, like, if you really were to follow these dynamics, then the the flutes would just they would just stand out almost unbearably loud compared to the strings, especially in a you know say a, a classical orchestra um, where there's like reduced strings. So just you know just just have everybody be the same dynamic, write a you know solo there, and just you know it'll it'll be fine. Seriously. Okay. Okay, so now we get to this. Yeah, and then once again, like you left out the downbeat. Don't leave out the downbeat in these patterns. Uh, but this is very, very cool. The way you got the bum, ba bum, ba bum, ba little. All right, all right, okay. So once again, I mean, just kind of looking at the at the way that this all kind of kind of goes, right? Once again, I, I think you just really need to watch out with scoring like this. That like you you're not keeping your your especially your violins down in you know in the basement so much, right? It's just like really there's a lot of mid range, lower range scoring for your violins, right? And you don't really start to take off until they're you know they're playing this higher stuff right in here. Okay, um, but you do think ahead to widening the gap. I like the. That's really, really cool. So, like, this is going to be, like, if this really is, you know, if you if this is, you know, horns and F, horns and C basso, those, those would be um, horns played with crooks, right? Natural horns. So this is going to be a stop note going to a D. But I would, I would put an accent on it, right? Because there's accents here. You see, the accent is not for the bottom part of the chord, right? So you might want to take it out of these other parts and just put it in places where you have that eh, 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 kind of thing, you know, the G sharp to the G natural, or in this case, E flat to the D, right, whatever. So I've written E flat to D being the same pitches. <clears throat> so leave it in the cello part, take it out of the other parts, okay? And, you know, put it here in the bassoon part, right? It should, should be right in here. The the first bassoon should be going eh, 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 eh. Okay, but I do like the widening out of the harmony right in here. Um, there are probably some pitches that could have gone to your, you know, to your trumpets and your C basso. And I mean, there are probably some things you could do to calculate. Just look at some of the other scores. Okay, so here we get to. Yeah, to this big opening thing happening here. So like like I said before, there's just too much emphasis on the mid, on the median of this uh, of this chord here. Right? I mean, technically it's a A flat 7 chord, right? But the G sharp on the top changes the function. Okay. Um Yeah. Because we're leading to the G, right? Yeah, I I really love the 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 triplets right in here. Uh, that's just that's just so great. It's very you know that feels very authentic to me. And I feel that the the scoring in here is really nice. Yeah, and see like that F sharp right in there is is going to be like a I think a fully stopped or half stopped um, hornists out there will correct me yeah but it you know this was all going to sound great and it's you know because of course we're we're going we're doing a cadence from you know from G to C here and these players can can fill in in really wonderful ways so yeah so this feels very cool to me I'm wondering if the piccolo is just a little too squeaky and do you know what i mean like um i mean i mean like what if this were an octave lower 
right? So that you had that like folk flute kind of sound from the piccolo. Like just suddenly, why don't you try that out in your, you know, in your Thomas's suggestions file? Just drop it an octave and just, you know, hear the the real, you know, the real um, kind of quavery, somewhat um, almost like, of course, if it's played by a wooden piccolo, right? And then you just, all the more, it would sound like a folk flute or maybe a little bit like a recorder. Yeah, but I mean, this is kind of cool, like clarinet going to bassoon, and then here you have the oboe taking over the melody. This is all great, you know, and I've, I've got the, you know, in my evaluation criteria, um, new quality of tone. It, absolutely, that is a situation with the piccolo, which, which I mean, yeah, just the very squeaky nature of it up there is, is I think, I think you, like, by having the piccolo come in here and just really open up the the audience's ears, you are kind of alienating them to the to the sudden shift up here, right? So you're, you're giving away the game, I feel. So if you're going to do this, don't do that. If you are going to do this, drop this an octave. That would be my recommendation, just in terms of proportions, right? Okay, so yeah, so complementary colors, new quality of tone, everything else, and then character and weight, uh, pretty nicely done. But why does this have to slur? All right, just because it slurs in the piano part, right? Why can't you just go down, up, down, right? As opposed to da, da. Yeah, is, is that, you know, is, is that better? Rather than bum, 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 I am Beethoven. Right, as opposed to dun dun. I don't just, just I just feel like the slurred option. You know, you have to remember that piano is a percussive instrument, so it's going to it's going to sound percussive on every pitch, even when it's slurred, right? So like, so you might want to maintain the the sense of percussiveness by individually articulating the notes, right? I I need to. This belongs on a new list of 12 common scoring errors. It wouldn't really be errors. It would be options, right? But yeah, this is very cool. So so winds and and strings. I feel it's, it's, a, it's a, you know, speaking of proportions, I feel this is nicely proportioned across the, across the registers. And yeah, this is cool. Just a little measured tremolo in here. So why are we going ta -ta 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 here and only going tun 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 in the bassoons? Bassoons can definitely go ta 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 ta. -ta. Maybe you forgot to t turn this into sixteenths. Have them all doing the same measured tremolo, okay? And you just get a much better effect there. Okay, so yeah, so here we have this. Um, you know, harmonize a contrary motion and. And then unison. I mean, it's kind of a cool idea. Yeah. And then this is this is uh, all right. <clears throat> all right. So so we have a problem here. All right. You're going da 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 So look, look, the way that these players are arcing upwards into their stronger registers, all the players really. They're just not going to want to do this diminuendo to the forte. Why not just let them crescendo to the forte? Like, there's no need for them to diminuendo here. Okay, I think you wanted, you wanted some force, right in here. Why not just make the the destination of the force the end of the phrase, right? And then just you know this can come in hot again. All right, um, about the only thing to think about here I would say Nathan like in terms of like whether to readjust things is that you pretty much use the same voicing and the same you know the same kind of setup twice I mean that you change things around the the clarinets take the place of the oboe and so on the bassoons are an octave higher and everything else but I mean what if everything were lower to begin with like an octave lower in the upper strings and winds right and you and like you just let the um, you know, you let the oboe player just stand by themselves up there, or you just had them, you know, 
end in a different way that ended up lower rather than higher, just the way that, that it is in the piano part, right? And then this higher part here makes a lot more sense with the piccolo and everything else and the bassoons boosting up. And then I would say, and also make your, your lower strings, lower and middle strings boost up too, right? Just so that you get some difference between, because otherwise it just really sounds like the same thing. Even though you've done a few things to change things around, it, you know, I mean, uh, a little bit of the middle weight is upwards, but the overall effect of the chord is the same, right? So some of this is just going to happen anyways. I don't know. I mean, yeah. This might be a little bit too much guidance. Like the hairpin, hairpins right in here. I think that they can... Yeah. Um, I would have your... I would have that... I would have your violins just end together with the with the viola coming in okay rather than this little kind of compromise I think this is just ending up distracting things but this is nice the way the clarinet um, trades over to the bassoon yeah and then here we go to those these running octaves and so on yeah, I mean that's that's all pretty cool. And then there's just like these little dun 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 ba ba da ba ba doot doot doot. Oops, excuse me. Like this and these little repeating oboes up here and so on. Yeah, I mean it's I I think that's that this is you know pretty effective. You know, once again, these you know the the clarinet can be going ta 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 ta. This could all be single tongued, right? real easily at this tempo. Yeah, so so those are my thoughts about your uh, about your score, Nathan. I, I just you know, I just thought it was um, you know, very strong entry and you know, I mean, I've been picking apart, I've been picking it apart, I've been pointing out some places where maybe you should have proofread your um, <clears throat> your transcription a little bit more, you know, like putting in a B flat there and so on. Um, but, but yeah, it's like it, other than those kinds of things, it holds together and, and, you know, I mean, it's, it's the kind of thing where definitely like you could put a little bit more work into it and just really, really make it shine next time. But like the next thing is going to be so different from Beethoven and this period and everything else. And it's like, going to even be different from the composer themselves um, in terms of what you would expect um, them which, which they'll also be a composer with a pretty solid reputation for doing a particular kind of music right so you know and you may listen to it and say what that is that the no, I don't believe it or you know or you might think oh yeah I, I know a little bit about the history of this composer that's that's what I would expect but it'll be incredibly different. And that is going to be one where you really are not going to want to let the occasional B natural be a B flat. Okay. Uh, but it has similar, it's, it has some similar problems to this one in, in other ways. So uh, in terms of like <clears throat> um, certain pitches um, being interpreted in certain ways. So, uh, so cool work, man. That's, thank you so much for being part of this challenge this year and for your patience while I was kind of getting my health together for the past couple of weeks. I, you, know, you were probably expecting your evaluation to drop back at the beginning of the month, but, uh, but you know, better late than never. And I'm getting things together and feeling better about it. And, you know, it's definitely back on track. So, so yeah. Um, and, you know, Everybody out there who is, you know, following along, you know what to do if you haven't done it already <laughs> is give Nathan some feedback in the comments below. And Nathan, if you can take some time and just, you know, especially um, with the with the other people who are doing entries at this level on Patreon, you know, if you can look through some of their scores and give them some feedback and thoughts and even just, you know, <clears throat> even just like a um you know a compliment right it just means a lot just 
these these challenges are meant really to you know not just for me to give people advice but also for people to start conversations and make connections and you know it's really the community that I envision for the internet right I, I think I said a long time ago um, you know this is the first generation of internet uh, composers and we have you know we have the right to decide what how we want it to be right not any trolls out there you know not any corporations or or disorganized people or um, plunderers <clears throat> but artists right like this is our corner right? and that's that's this is my vision people communicating over their music so have at it with a will and my blessing and I'm just so glad to be back doing this so um, stay tuned because another evaluation is coming very very soon Thank you.